Good morning, brethren. We have a political discussion this morning, and I thought about naming this message, Who is Jar Judge Roy Moore? <laughs> but I decided to make it Trump and Judge Roy Moore because um, I want to publish it as a Trump issue. Okay. Who is Judge Roy Moore? Judge Roy Moore is a probate uh, judge, or oh, he was a probate judge, he was removed from his office, uh, who has just won the runoff GOP primary for the state of Alabama. What does that mean? Governor, um, Attorney General Jeff Sessions was the senator from the state of Alabama to the United States Senate. So he is now Attorney General vacating that uh, senatorial seat. And there was a, what happens in a situation like this, when someone who is a senator leaves for whatever reason, the governor appoints someone to take his place until a time set for what they call a runoff election. What does that mean? It means that if, so, it means that if someone wants to challenge the appointee for that senatorial seat, they will have an election which is, which is actually a in this case, it is, they are Republicans. It's actually a primary election okay, to determine whether the appointee who is sitting in, in the senatorial seat and acting as senator, excuse me, will face the Democratic challenger in the national election, or will the uh, someone who was challenging his right to do that. So it's actually a GOP primary. So Judge Roy Moore challenged the, the, the gentleman who was appointed to Jeff's, Attorney General Jeff Sessions' seat when Jeff Sessions became Attorney General. The name of the, of the man who was actually a, um, uh, a prosecutor, he was in the Justice Department of the state of Alabama at the time that uh, Senator Sessions uh, changed his position to Attorney General. And his name is Luther Strange. He was an attorney general for the state of Alabama at the time. And he was appointed to fill a Senator Jeff Sessions' seat by the sitting governor, whose name is, his last name is Bentley. I think it's a, his first name is Roy. I wrote down my names, okay. Uh, uh, Roger. That's a, that's a typo over there, Susan. It should be Roger Bentley, Governor Roger Bentley. So, Governor Roger Bentley, Governor of Alabama, appointed Attorney General um, uh, Luther Strange to the senatorial seat of now Attorney General Jeff Sessions. And at this past Tuesday, was the runoff election because Judge Roy Moore challenged uh, acting Senator Luther Strange uh, for, the, uh, for the nomination to run against the Democratic nominee for that Senate seat, okay, which is, I guess is going to be in November. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it hasn't happened yet. It's going to be in November. It'll be a federal election, so it'll be in November. So it was, it was a very big issue. Okay, I um, I spent quite a bit of time listening to videos on this. Um, I, I thought of, I considered letting you hear Michelle Malkin. I don't know if you know her name, but I have a lot of respect for Michelle Malkin. For years, she's been appearing on Fox News. I don't really watch Fox News very much anymore, but I've heard her for years. She's very pro-American, very conservative. Uh, I believe she's very Christian. If I'm not mistaken, she's Christian. She has a spirit of righteousness on her. And um, brethren, as I tell you all the time, I want the truth. I, Jesus and I, okay, we are fully capable of reaching a decision as to who to vote for, excuse me, and who the Lord's candidate is, because we should only be voting for who we believe to be the Lord's candidate. See, that's how we decide who to vote for, brethren. And we had a big issue at the time of, of President Trump's 
nomination, and I preached the whole message on it here in this meeting. You don't, well, you can, if you want the information, you can check out his past and check him out on the internet and do all of that. But if you want to be in right standing with God, you vote for the Lord's candidate. And this is a very important principle that I find a lot of Christians do not understand. A lot of Christians don't even vote for lack of understanding. God is very much involved in our elections and in our political system. The Lord Jesus Christ is very involved in our political system and in our elections. And we need to find out who he wants to vote for because we are his hands and his legs and his mind and his mouth and we have the credentials to vote. He is a spirit man that's inside of us. And there's now, there's a civil war going on in this country right now. It's a, a cold civil war going on. Uh, no one's shooting in the streets or bombing, thank God. But there's also a civil war going on in the Lord's Church. Because many Christians do not want to do and do not do what the Lord Jesus Christ wants them to do. So the Lord Jesus, he has a real problem with the rebellious wife, his church. Now, in most instances, the, the believers, the Christians, they don't understand anything that I'm saying. They don't understand this, okay? But the bottom line is that they're doing things in their heart line. Although I must say that in, 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 these, in these turbulent political times, a lot of Christians have stood up uh, politically and done the right thing. And, and brethren, when I say the right thing, that's not my subjective opinion. Subjective means it's what I think, okay? It doesn't matter what I think. What matters is what the Lord Jesus Christ wants accomplished. And his church, which is his mind, his hands, and his legs incarnate, okay, are supposed to be acting out his will. But he has a real problem, sort of like a quadriplegic. His, his, sometimes his body doesn't work. Sometimes his hands don't work. Sometimes his legs don't work. Sometimes Christians don't go to the polls when he wants them to go to the polls. Sometimes they check the wrong box because they don't discern the body of Christ, either within themselves or within others. They don't understand the mind of Christ. So this is, this is actually for my message, my next message. They, they, this is the female church. And when the male appears, they will understand and they will do everything that God tells them to do. But right now, the Lord Jesus Christ has a problem because his body is crippled in multiple areas. Okay? So, uh, so we have Judge Roy Moore challenging the sitting temporary um, senator for the state of Alabama, Luther Strange. And it turned out to be uh, well, a big issue. Well, well, I was telling you about Michelle Malkin. Yes, what Michelle Malkin had to say about the issue was this. Okay, well, let me tell you this. As far as I know, every every conservative speaker, you know, talk show host, writer, as far as I know, there was not one conservative writer or talk show host that that was on the side that was that was voting for. Well, you have to be in Alabama to vote. <coughs> was on the side of Luther Strange. They're all on the side of Judge Roy Moore, with one exception. The President of the United States, I should say two exceptions. The President of the United States and the Assistant President of the United States, the Vice President of the United States, okay. They were, they were backing uh, Luther Strange. And it turned out to be a major, major political issue that I think has significant spiritual consequences. I'm going to try to lay this out for you. Why is everyone concerned with Alabama? Who was campaigning for him? Bannon, Steve Bannon, who, uh, who was a part of the team that got the president elected and recently resigned from the White House and is now running Breitbart News and is fighting the progressives and the New World Order from his position as, as publisher and speaker. He was down there at the camp, at the rally for Judge Roy Moore. Sarah, Sarah Palin was there. Uh, Gorker, I forget his first name, who just resigned, who also 
these men are resigning with good things to say about President Trump, but resigning so that they could fight without restrictions. Because when you're in the White House, you're a federal employee, and you're subject to all kinds of restrictions. Okay. So that's Steve Bannon, Sarah Palin, uh, Gorka. Nigel Farage was down there campaigning for him. Nigel Farage is the, the British citizen who, as I understand it, was really responsible for Brexit, okay? And he's been over here supporting our conservative movement. If there were others, I don't recall their names, but I, the only, I haven't heard anyone speak out on behalf of Luther Strange other than our president, who was at the rally for Luther Strange, okay? So the left is going crazy seeing this as a, um, as a break in the, in the president's backing, but I don't think so. But anyway, uh, what to all the, uh, and uh, Laura Ingram, who I have a lot of respect for, and I hear she now has her own show on Fox News. Um, uh, she also, I believe, was down there at the rally, or at least she was backing Judge Roy Moore. Okay? So what's going on here? Okay. Um, First of all, what does Michelle Malkin have to say about Luther Strange? And it was just about five minutes. I decided to just reiterate it for you myself rather than take the time to turn on the video. Michelle Malkin was very much into facts. She's written several books and she's into facts. She says that, well, first of all, fact. Governor Roger Bentley, I said Roger, right? Let's see, Roger. I need to take my glasses on. Roger, Governor Roger Bentley was so corrupt he was removed from office. And one of his last acts before being removed from office was to appoint Luther Strange to Jeff Sessions' Senate seat. That is fact. Michelle Malkin says that it was a quid pro quo. What does that mean? You scratch my back, I scratch your back. And fact, according to Michelle Malkin, after Luther Strange, who was an attorney general, who was, I guess he took over Jeff Sessions' place. I'm not sure about that, but he apparently was, a, you see, there's, brethren, there's one attorney general, and then there are many, many assistant attorney generals. The attorney general is like an administrator, and he assigns other assistant attorney generals to do all the work, and they each have their own cases. So I, I can't tell you for sure that Luther Strange was acting in Jeff Sessions' Uh, I'm sorry, Jeff Sessions was the senator. Uh, I can't tell you for sure that Luther Strange was was the, mo the the attorney general. Well, he was one of the assistants, but I think he was the attorney general. And he made a deal, you know, with Governor Roger Bentley, who was who was removed from office for corruption. So the action was going on at the time that Jeff Sessions left the Senate. Okay, the seat was open. Governor Roger Bentley was still in office, was a, but was about to be removed for corruption. Who removes a governor for corruption? The Attorney General. This is a state Attorney General and a federal Attorney General. Jeff Sessions became the federal Attorney General. Luther Moore was the Alabama State Attorney General, who was prosecuting Governor Roger Bentley. So Governor Roger Bentley said to Attorney General Luther Strange, if you stop, you know, pr prosecuting me, I will appoint you to Jeff Sessions' Senate seat. That is not a fact, but that's what it looks like because uh, Governor Roger Bentley was and has been since removed from office for corruption. Luther Strange was prosecuting him, okay? and Luther Strange stopped prosecuting him and went to the Senate. So draw your own conclusion <laughs> that it looks like a quid pro quo. So all of the conservatives are against him. In addition, they say that he is a lobbyist, he is an establishment man, he is in, um, this is what they say, he's in uh, Mitch McConnell's pocket, and Mitch McConnell has got to go. This man has got to go. He's really bad news. I think his approval rating is 15% or something like that. And yet his state keeps re-electing him. Maybe things will change now. So. Uh, and um, also, uh, I'm, this is what I've learned from my investigation, okay, that from other people, okay, I have actually gone into the senatorial records, but this is what I've read, 
and, well, let me just refresh you about this. Rec it's called the reconciliation issue in the Senate. Okay. The Senate makes its own rules. Okay. And it is, there is a Senate rule that says to pass legislation or certain kinds of legislation, you need a, you need 60 votes. Now, there are only 52 senators, um, there are only 52 Republican senators. So if that rule stands, that you need 60 votes to pass legislation, that means you have to get, um, you have to get Democratic senators to agree with you, with, you, with, with the Republican platform, or you can't pass Republican legislation. So, um, I didn't really anticipate speaking about the reconciliation rules, so I may not, I'm, I don't have all the information for you. Um, I just know that the, the reconciliation means that if you use the reconciliation rule, you don't need the 60 votes, you just need 52, okay? And somehow that's a Senate rule. That means the Senate made it, and the Senate could change it. And Mitch McConnell, in this instance, is the Senate. Okay. So there's been a big issue, and I, I, I'm sorry I don't have all the information as to what the benefits are. I think, I think if you if you if you don't use reconciliation, if you need the 60 votes, then there's then they can filibuster and they can all get up and talk. But I'm sorry, I'm not prepared to talk more about reconciliation. So we're told that it's obviously it's in the benefit of the Demo of the Republicans right now to use reconciliation, which means you only need 52 votes. Okay, I think it's 52 votes. Please forgive me if I've got this. I really don't, didn't intend to talk about it. If I have any of the details wrong, please forgive me. I think it's 52 votes. So uh, Luther Strange was going to vote, and, I, and I, I'm sorry, I don't know whether the reconciliation means you need the 60 votes or you can use the 52, okay? But Luther Strange was going to vote that the, six, the 60 rule should remain in effect. Why would a Republican vote that the 60, that you need 60 votes to pass legislation when the Republicans only have 52? Why would he vote that way? Why would he vote for the 60? Did I make myself clear? No, I'm talking about, okay. Now, the issue is this, brethren, that there is no more Republican or, or Democrat, see? And there's no more conservative or liberal. Either you're New World Order or you're a patriot. Either you're New World Order or you're Americana. Either you're a New World Order or you are for the, for the nation-state system of the way the world operates. And the New World Order is run by the European Union, which, which and the heads of the European Union are not, are not elected, and they have a constitution, the European Union has a constitution that severely restricts freedom, uh, or freedom for the average person. See? So either you're for the New World Order, where it's run by, a group of unelected Europeans that have no regard for America. I could say they hate America, but let's say they have no regard for America, as opposed to a world system where every country is its own nation with its own leaders, and every nation is sovereign. So what's happened over these last years is that unscrupulous and evil men, some of them which have been president of the United States, have sold the United States to the New World Order, and they've become very, very wealthy. And we now have in this country at this time what is called crony capitalism. We still have capitalism, but it's called crony capitalism. What does that mean? It means that they're still buying and selling, but there's a lot, and you can have your own business, but it's a, a lot of control so that the money is all, is, is basically con condensed into a handful of people that are now multi-billionaires, and they're actually trillionaires. I don't know if there are any American trillionaires, but I know that the Rothschilds are trillionaires. So we have crony capitalism here, where the government is in bed with the private sector, and instead of the government being a watchdog for the private sector, they're in bed with them, and all of the, 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 the men, mostly men, but there are some women, that are involved in it have become very, very wealthy at the expense of the American people. What is that? What do you mean, the expense of the American people? They've given our economy over to the, to the EU and largely to China. They sold us to China. That's where all the jobs went. All the jobs went south. 
That's why we have so many people and work and our economy is so poor. You know, our leaders, Bill Clinton, George Bush, George H. Bush, okay, they sold us. They sold the American people. But the average person doesn't know what's going on. The average person doesn't know what's going on today. Except they're waking up and realizing that something is wrong. And of course, Obama, how can I leave Obama out? I remember right after Obama was elected, I saw on TV a black woman who was so excited that Obama was elected and it was in a town hall meeting. And she said to him, President Obama, when are the jobs coming back? And he just, well, I don't know what he said to her, no jobs coming back under Obama. They sold us. They sold us. And they put many people on welfare, slaves of the, of the system, so that a handful of people could become very rich, as opposed to normal capitalism, where the mid, there's a big middle class that gets a chance to have a, a home and a couple of cars and educate the kids and everything that we were experiencing in this country. They sold us. But that's not this message. So anyway, this is the issue, okay? Luther Strange, according to what I understand, lobbyist, and, and President Trump promised to clean the swamp up. He made it illegal for you to lobby uh, while you were in the, in, government, in the government, or for five years after you left the government, President Trump made that illegal. Okay, but this man has been a lobbyist. That means, Everybody's in everybody's pockets. Everybody's scratching everybody else's back. Everybody's getting rich. And they're not holding up their oath of office. They're supposed to be for the country, but they're not. They're progressive and they're actually, they're, as far as I'm concerned, they're actually treasonous and agents of a foreign government, which is the United um, Union, the European Union. So the issue in every election, the issue of politics today, is New World Order against nationalism. That's the big war that's going on. And the people that are running the New World Order, both in this country and other countries, they are largely Satanists and pedophiles. So it's also a major religious issue. The reason that they're bringing Islam in, and who was they, the leaders of the New World Order, and many of them are in our government. Traitors, treasonous people in our government. And, uh, um, I'm sorry, President, I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Um, well, I'll just leave it. Tra tra treasonous people in our government. I, I, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. So that's the issue of New World Order against nationalism. Oh, yeah. This is why they're bringing Islam in. See? They, these people are pagans. They're Satanists. You know, why would they be bringing Islam in? They want to destroy Christianity. They know that there is power in Christianity, even in the female church. There is power in Christianity, and they want Christianity destroyed. And it's their plan, should they ever succeed, which they will not, in wiping out Christianity in this country, then the pagans will kill the Islamists. They're not going, although, although the paganism is more compatible with Islam than it is with Christianity, because Islam has a strong, strong homosexual pedophilia uh, level to it. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's not published, but as I understand it, that it's, it is, this is absolutely true, that uh, it is okay, homosexual activity with young boys is okay. The only homosexuality that Islam punishes is Islam where the man is in the female role. That is considered perverse for a man to be in a female role. If you are in the male role, and you are having sex with another man or with a little boy, they look the other way. And there's a lot of pedophilia, homosexual sex with little boys that are forced against their, their will. So Islam is much more compatible with the New World Order, but the New World Order would not tolerate them. Okay? They'll get rid of them when they don't need them, or at least that's the plan. Okay? They'll just poison them and give them cancer. You need to understand how powerful these people are, brethren. You need to understand that there, are, there is technology today that is causing all of these, or that can cause all of these hurricanes. You decide who, whether, that's, whether that's nature or not. We have the technology to cause these hurricanes. We need to understand how powerful these people are, both spiritually and technologically. 
Okay, but this is a political political meeting. So that's the issue. So all the conservatives we are heroes, and I'm really excited to tell you that I see a real contingent of exciting conservative, usually Christian, as far as I know, they're all Christians, heroes coming up together in this country, you know. They all supported Rudge, Judge Roy Moore, except our president and and Vice President, my pants. So what was this all about? I, I saw President Trump's speech on behalf of Luther Strange. Luther Strange is strange. <laughs> I I heard Luther I, I heard the debate between Luther Strange and Judge Roy Moore. And it was so dull, I wouldn't waste your time listening to it. Luther Strange is strange. You know, he has, uh, I actually uh, read something that President Trump had said, well, he might be making a mistake because Luther Strange is low energy. Well, low energy is, is, is putting it mildly, you know. So, I, but he was very low energy, and Judge Roy Moore was very charismatic. I heard the anointing on him the minute he opened his mouth. But aside from that, I didn't know why all the conservatives were where they were until I heard Michelle Malkin. Um, um, although, although Judge Roy Moore did say that he was a lobbyist, but I didn't know whether to believe it or not because it was the debate. Mm -hmm. So this is the issue. What happened to President Trump? What happened to President Trump? And, by the way, the runoff was Tuesday. So Judge Roy Moore won. Okay. He won with a very high margin. And Michelle Malkin says that the Alabamans, it's a strong Christian state, 89% call themselves Christian, and 49% are evangelical Christians in Alabama. So they, Michelle Malkin says they know that, that Governor Roger Bentley was corrupt, and they know that, that, that Luther Strange t getting the, the Senate seat was a quid pro quo and the whole state of Alabama. Anyway. So what happened to President Trump? Now, listen, brethren, this is, this is political and it's spiritual mixed. I'm sort of reluctant to say this because I don't want anyone coming and taking a clip of my words and using it against the president, but you have to hear this, brethren. You have to hear this. I, I open this message by telling you how we are the, the hands and the legs and the, and the, the vehicle that is supposed to be doing what our brain, which is Christ Jesus, is telling us to do. See? And when we don't do what Christ Jesus tells us to do, even if it's in ignorance, it is on the spiritual plane, it is not even perceived as the reality of your behavior and my behavior when I make a wrong choice, okay, and I don't do what the Lord wants me to do. The reality on the spiritual plane is that I have betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ and that in that instance I am a Judas. I am Judas in that instance. Now you have to hear this, brethren, excuse me. Okay. That is how it's perceived. That is the reality on the spiritual plane. So what happened to President Trump? This is my well, first of all, let me tell you this. All of the Conservatives that stood up and made a speech at Judge Roy Moore's rally, and Steve Bannon is, is, I really didn't know very much about Steve Bannon. I'm very impressed with the man. I have to tell you, I'm a little concerned because he's a very strong Catholic. And I did hear him mention the Holy Father, so I'm not too happy about that, but he has Christian morals and Christian principles, and he's a very powerful man, and I'm very impressed with him. And uh, well, I don't want to go all over the place. I do have a second message today. I, I heard him taken apart. I heard Steve Bannon taken apart by, um, what's that guy's name? Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. Someone told me about Ben Shapiro. Maybe it was June. I don't know. Someone mentioned I had never heard of him until a couple of weeks ago. And uh, so I listened to him a couple of times. I didn't, I didn't particularly get any, I didn't particularly care for him. He's a conservative Jew, and he has a talk show. He talks, you know, he's on the internet. I wasn't particularly impressed with him. And then I heard him take Steve Bannon apart. And uh, I didn't like what I heard. But this is not about Ben Shapiro. I, at the moment, am very impressed with, with Steve Bannon. 
I, all I want is the truth. If the Lord shows me otherwise, I will change. You see? Now, this is what I'm trying to tell you. The left, the progressives, they do not understand this. They do not understand righteousness. They do not understand faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what human being he's appearing through. They don't understand that. And they perceive this movement that elected President Trump as a cultish movement, that they will follow him anywhere blindly and do whatever he says. See, that's what's said about me. If you look, if you find that link on the internet, I hope it's not true. You should not follow me blindly. You should seriously consider what I have to say and pray about it until you get a response from the God that you have a relationship with. So these conservatives, headed up by Steve Bannon, that was at Judge Moore's rally, they all lifted up President Trump. They lifted him up. I heard Steve Bannon say, well, when he backs a candidate, he backs him to the end. Even if something bad comes out about him, he backs him to the end. And I want you to know that I will back President Trump no matter what mistake he makes, the only exception being I, I be, that I am completely convinced that the Lord has left him. So long as the Lord is still with him, I will back him. I, if he does something wrong, I'll say it. But I will back him. I will not leave him. See? And hopefully, that's how you feel about me. That if I ever do something wrong, because I'm just human, that I hope that you feel that way about me. But if I do something wrong, you need to pray about it or talk to me about it. But if the anointing leaves me, run for the hills. See? So. Steve Bannon was saying he's completely committed to President Trump. They love him. They were all saying this. They love him, but they disagreed with him on this political decision. So what happened here is so exciting, brethren. I pray that the Lord anoints me to, to convince you of what I'm talking about. It was just a few weeks ago that I heard St Dr. Steve Pachenik on Alex Jones. I really like Dr. Steve Pachenik. I like to listen to him. I think he's a truthful man, and I don't know whether he's a Christian or not, but he has a spirit of righteousness and he loves this country. Okay? And he seems to have incredible information. And he actually had, a, uh, he actually was putting Alex Jones in his place. He actually took down Alex Jones. And what he was telling me, I even mentioned this to you a couple of weeks ago, what Dr. Pachanik was saying. This sun does not rise and set on Donald Trump. The sun does not rise and set on the President of the United States. He says, the sun rises and sets on this nation with our Constitution. Our Constitution, our law. Presidents come and go. The Constitution stands forever. In other words, if President Trump makes a mistake, it is not the end of the world. If, God forbid, President Trump completely fails, which I don't think will happen, the Constitution will stand and the country will stand. The country will survive the loss of any human person. We stand on God and the Constitution. And he really took Alex Jones down, see? Because there a, was a bit of idolatry there for President Trump. And I remember during the nomination, when the Lord told me to tell you, and I told you all, let's not idolize President Trump. I don't know if you remember that or not, but I remember telling you that. No. Okay. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ, and I hope that you're faithful to the Constitution of this nation, the law. Okay. So that was what Dr. Pachanik said a few weeks ago, and here it is. Brethren, in my opinion, President Trump made a mistake. And I think he knows he made a mistake. And the other conservative leaders, they stood against his political decision, but they supported him. They said great things about him. They, they, they lifted him up. They said they loved him. They talked about all of the accomplishments he's had so far. But they would not follow him to support Luther Strange, who we're told was in Mitch McConnell's pocket. Now, I wish I had more information, but I don't. But I will tell you this, that I understand that this conflict here, it was not about President Trump. It was about Mitch McConnell. 
Mitch McConnell must lose his power in the Senate. He is a New World Order guy. You know, he's not. He's blocking the president's agenda. And there is a big power play between President Trump and Mitch McConnell. So, as we know, our president went to, to Washington saying, well, you have to make deals. You have to get along with people. Now, I, I just told you, I'm, I'm with President Trump to the end, only exception being God leaves him, which, I, which is not going to happen. Do you realize what this man is going through? Do you know what's coming against him? And he's surrounded with people that are whispering in his ear. And he, he was really, um, I don't want to use a word that would weaken him. Our president is a very tough man. But he was not happy that that health care failed. As you know, it was, the left was saying it was a big defeat for him, but there were, you win and you lose. And when, you, when you're in a situation where there's negotiations, you win and you lose. The only thing that matters is the final outcome. But he was not happy at what happened with health care. So he had to make a deal with Mitch McConnell. Now, I don't think he made the right deal. You know, I hope nobody uses this against me. Listen to me. The man's not perfect. He's under all kinds of pressure. And I'm looking at his motives. And I, there's not a doubt in my mind he's fighting for the American people with all he has. And he struck a deal with Mitch McConnell. And I believe it was a mistake, and I think he knows it was a mistake. Now, he, what, what was the mistake? Brethren, you vote for God's man. This was the exact issue that put President Trump in. Okay, and he turned against his own experience. President Trump stood up there with, at the rally for Luther Strange saying that the reason I'm for this man is that if he wins the runoff, okay, in other words, if he gets the, if he gets the seat, if he gets, no, if he gets, if he wins the, the runoff, which is a primary, he can defeat the Democratic candidate. So I'm choosing to vote for Luther Strange because I believe he stands a better chance of defeating the Democratic candidate than Judge Moore does. Do you understand that? That's what they were saying about Donald Trump. Don't vote for him, he can never win. Don't vote for him. He can never win in the national election. Pick a bigger Republican candidate that could defeat Hillary. Okay, so it was the same exact issue. And Trump went against what got him elected. But it was more than that. It was some kind of a deal with Mitch McConnell. I don't know what it was. If, he's, if he backed McConnell's choice, then McConnell would give him the votes in the, in the, on his health bill or his tax bill or something like that. But you don't strike deals like that, brethren. <coughs> you don't strike, you don't, you vote for God's candidate. See? You don't strike deals like that. And, but our president and our vice president struck that deal. And it didn't go well for him, because you would think if the president of the United States backs a candidate, that that candidate would win. And if that candidate does not win, it doesn't make the president, it makes the president look very weak. So it was not it was not in his best interest to do it, but I don't doubt for a second that President Trump thought he was doing the right thing. He wants to pass health care for the people. Excuse me, and he wants he wants his taxes through, but it was a bad deal. You see. And uh, so after uh, Judge Moore won won the runoff, President Trump uh, congratulated him and removed his tweets supporting uh, Luther Strange and and Judge Roy Moore said. Um, of course, I'm paraphrasing. He said, oh, I'm all for President Trump. This, I understand that he backed the other candidate. But, uh, and, but he pretty much said the same thing. The man, brethren, Judge Roy Moore stood up there as his ex as, and when he gave his acceptance speech, he was quoting scripture. The man was quoting scripture, and he wasn't reading it from a piece of paper. He was quoting it from memory, and he wasn't quoting it rote. He was quoting it out of his own heart. It was incredible to see someone who had just won an election and this country standing up for God and righteousness in that way and actually brought me to tears. I actually sat at my desk and cried. So God is raising up heroes, brethren. He's raising up heroes. I'm very excited. So listen to what happened from our spiritual point of view today. From a, from the political point of view, 
God's man won. And I believe that he'll win the, Democrat, the, the national election. Why? Because I believe God's sending him to Washington. And that's what he said. So whatever God wants is what, what's going to happen to me. The man, the man is an incredible man of God. Now he's probably a basic Baptist, you know. But he's got something. He's got God's righteousness. Now the story about Judge Moore is that he was chastised twice and the second time removed from office. The first time he tackled with the government over because the, the Alabama government wanted to remove a stone, um, um, I, I, what you wouldn't call it a statue, but it was the Ten Commandments in, in stone, and he he wouldn't he wouldn't go along with it, so he was chastised by the court. He wouldn't remove it, and the second time had to do with gay marriage, and he wouldn't go along with it, and they they fired him. The, the state of Alabama fired him, so he's not, not a he's not a, a, a practicing judge right now. And um, you're going to hear more about that. I'm going to play for you a, a well, <laughs> it was supposed to be an interview, but it turned out to be a debate between Chris Como and Judge Roy Moore. I will talk to you more about that in a minute. You have to hear this, okay? I'll talk to you more about that in a minute. So um, I believe President Trump knows that he made a mistake. I hope that he knows that he compromised his own righteousness. I don't doubt for a second that he thought he was doing the right thing. But then you know how many of us think we're doing the right thing and we sin. Now, a person, someone in the ministry called me with a dream as all of this was break, breaking yesterday. The pressure on me was incredible. So I know that Christ in the midst of me is very involved in the political situation in this country and the pressure of the last few days. I didn't know what was going on until uh, two nights ago. Um, I never heard the man's name before. I didn't even know there was an Alabama runoff. I didn't know anything about it. But the pressure on me was just terrible. And two nights ago, I was, I just cried out to God from, you know, the scripture says that Jonah cried out from the belly of the whale. That's just a parable of Christ within the person crying out. Well, it was from deep within my soul. I said, Lord, you've just got to hide me. I think that's the word that I was using, just hide me. And I was in such, you can't even call it prayer, there's another word for it, I, travail. I was in such travail. And when I came out of that travail, I found the Judge Moore situation on the internet. But I didn't put two and two together. Then I woke up yesterday morning and it was the worst. I, I didn't sleep. Like for two nights, I hardly slept. Three nights. Last night, I really didn't sleep, you know. The other two nights, I, didn't fall, I, I was up in, but I did, at least I did get a few hours in. Last night, I think I just slept an hour. As soon as I, as soon as I finally got to bed, I was up till 5 o'clock creating these uh, illustrations for you. As soon as I got to bed, I started getting cramps in my feet. So I hardly slept last night at all, okay. Um, but yesterday was just horrendous, and I still didn't know what was going on. But I considered that it could have been the political situation. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that Christ Jesus in me, okay, was affecting the political outcome? Now, I'm not saying he wasn't doing it to anybody else, okay, but I was I was feeling listen and you need to understand how this works because it could be going working through you too. Okay. This this literally is the Lord Jesus Christ joining himself to Christ in a person. That means Christ Jesus came into existence within me. And as I've been teaching it, once the Lord Jesus puts his feet down in the earth, he then has the ability to affect events on the circle of the earth. And we're waiting for the Lord Jesus to join himself permanently to a company of people, uh, to join himself permanently to Christ Jesus in a company of people. And things are going to change when he is joined permanently. I don't think he's joined permanently in me yet. Why? Because my knees are still hurting me and I'm still having problems with my body. Unless my understanding is incorrect. I'm thinking that when he joins with me permanently, 
my body will be healed. I do have a, I do have a prophecy that I will be healed of everything. And I think that when he joins with Christ in me permanently, I will be healed of everything. So I don't think it's a permanent union. But I think that he spends a lot of time, who, the Lord Jesus Christ spends a lot of time joined to Christ in me. As long as he can. I don't understand what the criteria is. Uh, unless my, my sin is some kind of sin. I sin all the time. We all sin all the time. Okay? We pray without ceasing and we sin without ceasing. Okay? Uh, so he's spending as much as he's trying. Brother, brother, he, he, he joins himself to Christ in me and he holds on as long as he can. But my sin causes the separation. So he, he stays attached to Christ as long as he can. And when he's attached to Christ, he emits power on the circle of the earth. Because all human beings come from one soul. And that's the best way that I can describe it. He's like a hub. I'm not saying I'm the only hub, although I, I, I'm not saying I'm the only hub, but I'm telling you this is what my experience is. So he, he holds on to Christ as long as he can. And as long as he's, that attachment is there, he has the power of Christ Jesus, the second Adam, to go through the circle of the earth and influence. There's no time or space influence whoever he's influencing. And that pressure was just incredible to the point that I was crying out like that because I really didn't know what was going on that was so severe. I was saying, well, is there anyone coming against the ministry? I don't think anything is going on that would cause this, you know. And then yesterday was just bad, really bad. And... Um, but I, I worked, you know, I had a conference with Susan and it started to break after I had a conference with Susan. And then I just went out, um, I went out, and things were better, but, but not good. And um, I got a phone call. And then I took my walk, I walked three miles, and I, I, that helped, you know. I had some ice cream with hot fudge, that, did, that helped too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did not die yet yesterday. I started out being good. I said, well, I won't have pizza or something crazy like that. I'm going to go get a hamburger and I'm going to have french fries without salt because the salt is really bad for me. So I did that. But then when I took my walk, I couldn't resist the ice cream. And we have a place called Sundays here, so you don't have to get a whole hot fudge Sunday. You can control how much. So I just took a little hot fudge, but it was so good. And peanut butter ice cream it was delicious. <laughs> yeah. So I came back, and I was feeling a little better, and I got a phone call from someone in the ministry telling me about a dream that they had last night. And in the dream, it had to do, you see, this is where we are on the level that we're dreaming in this ministry with a few rare exceptions. We dream out of Netzach Hod. That's, that's a low place to be getting prophecy and words of knowledge and dreams. That's a low place. We, we, we hope for the day that we receive these dreams and words of knowledge from Bina, okay? Or at least from Tefiri in the midst of us. So when you get a dream from Netzach Ho, the, the characters are always wrong. Well, there's always wallpaper. It comes up as people that you know, but it's really about someone else. So this person had a dream, and in the dream, her sister came to visit her. Her sister, or her mother, I think, was her sister. The crux of the dream is. And bypassed her and chose her sister who, in, in real life, they're not, there's controversy between them as two sisters. So this other person, it was either her mother or her other sister, came and bypassed her and chose her sister, the one who, at uh, least, in, and I'm not disputing it, I'm just reporting to you, at least in this person's life, her sister was wronging her. I'm telling you what she tells me. I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with it. So. The sister came and chose the well-meaning sister, and chose the, the, the sister that's wronging the one that had the dream, who's, who wants reconciliation, at the very least wants reconciliation. And, uh, and we didn't know what it was about. You know, I said to her, well, if I hear from, any, from God, I'll let you know. And we hung up the phone, and then I started to get this whole revelation. Actually, I started to feel a lot better after that. And I got this. I got this whole revelation that that it was political. And in this person's dream, it was saying that President Trump was the sister that came and chose the wrong person. Now, brethren, I told you. I'm going to say it again. I love President Trump. 
I, there is nothing that he can do that I cannot forgive him for. I know that he's a flawed human being just like I am. And I've been running this ministry for what's going to be 30 years. I've made my mistakes. And I've been chastised by the Lord. And I have cried over the mistakes that I made. He carries a tremendous burden. And there is nothing that I cannot forgive him for so long as he repents. See? Thing. We're supposed to forgive people whether they repent or not, but there's nothing that I can forg not forgive him for other than uh, turning his back on the Lord Jesus Christ. He did not turn his back on the Lord Jesus Christ. He made a mistake. He's under all this incredible pressure. I cannot even imagine. I know what kind of pressure I'm under. I can't really, I shouldn't really say this little ministry because spiritually this is a very powerful and important ministry. I'm under a lot of pressure. I, I make mistakes. I make silly mistakes all the time from the pressure. He made a mistake. But you need to hear this. In the spirit world, it was a betrayal. In the spirit world, it was, and, this, and the person that had the dream told me before we knew what it meant. She said the, pre the predominant spirit on the dream was betrayal. You need to understand every time you make a mistake, every time I make a mistake, it is a, what kind of mistake that I don't do what Jesus would do if he was if he was in control. That my carnal mind overrides what he I am his arms, I am his mouth, I am his mind, I everything I do, I'm supposed to be doing what he wants me to do. When I make a choice other than what he would do, I'm Judas at that moment. And it's very serious. Why am I telling you this? Because when you make a mistake, and we all make mistakes, you need to understand it's a second mistake. It's a piggyback mistake if you make light of it. You need to understand how important our work is, how important it is that Christ is in us, and how important his work is. And if his work is our work, then our work is very important. The life of this nation, based upon its constitution, is on the line. The kingdom of God is coming, brethren. How would it glorify Jesus if this country goes into tyranny and then the kingdom of God comes? Well, that's ridiculous. It's not going under any more tyranny than it's already under. It's an incredible spiritual and bloodless civil war is going on. It's incredible. People are waking up, but too many are sleeping. Too many are sleeping, you see. So what happened here, that was the pressure on me. That the Lord, who knows, I'd like to know the answer to this question. Did the pressure come because the Lord Jesus was attached to Christ in me and working? Okay. Maybe, maybe the pressure was not political pressure. Maybe I didn't feel the political pressure. Maybe what I felt was, excuse me, the unification. Maybe that's why the Lord isn't permanently joined yet. Who could live forever under that kind of pressure? Maybe he's bringing me up slowly. Or maybe, uh, maybe he's changing. Well, I know that I'm stronger. I, I know. I, I mean, Satan has no mercy. Of course, Satan is Satan and me trying to destroy me. He's my unconscious mind. I'm, I'm doing well in areas that I used to struggle with, but I have new areas. But by and large, I'm going in the right direction with my health. You see. So maybe that's why it's not permanent yet. Maybe that unification creates this kind of incredible pressure that I couldn't tolerate it permanently at this point. Now, I didn't think of that until this minute. I thought it was that I was actually feeling the political pressure in the country, but I'm, I think the Lord just corrected me. Is that if he were to join with any one of you, and bring, bring Christ Jesus into existence and do the work that he wants to do, the pressure on our nervous system, on our emotions and our mind would be intolerable until uh, maybe Christ has to mature to a particular degree. I, I don't know, but I believe that's what he just told me. The pressure was the unification. The pressure was vertical. The pressure was not a horizontal. So I think that I've given you a good snapshot of what the situation is, okay? And everyone, I'll just say one more thing about it. 
all of these conservative speakers, they all expressed their great admiration and respect for President Trump. But what, what happened with yesterday is fantastic. Brethren, it's what, it's what Dr. Prochenik talked about. These conservative leaders did what was right, even though it caused them to deviate from our hero. And, and President Trump is our hero. But they didn't follow their hero into destruction. They followed God and they followed righteousness. And they stood for the right candidate. This was actually a righteous correction to President Trump that will help him in the long run. I know when this ministry was first raised up, and it was a long time ago, I had a couple of decisions to make. And I asked the brethren here, hoping that they would tell me if they thought I was wrong, but they wouldn't speak up. So I was on my own for years, and I made a couple, a couple of serious mistakes here. They stood. Our, our righteous leaders, our conservative leaders, they did not follow Trump off the bridge. He is not a cult leader. God comes first. The Constitution comes second. Trump knows it, but the, the, the uh, progressives don't know it. The other side don't know it. They think that, that there's a big split in Trump's base. There's not a, a, there was not a split in Trump's base. Our conservative leaders standing for righteousness will be a righteous pressure on our president. Because for whatever reason, I don't understand it, but what do I know? He has himself surrounded by liberals in the White House. And from what I'm told, he's allowed them, he's allowed General Kelly to cut him off from people like Alex Jones and, and Sarah Palin and, and Steve Bannon. They can't even get to talk to him. So in a situation like that, the kind of pain that the president felt from this mistake is the only way to reach him. Do you understand what I'm saying, the anchor held? Do you understand that I'm saying the anchor held? Mm -hmm. President Trump is just a man. And he's not even, and really from what I understand, he's not even a strong Christian. They say, he, someone said he's a baby Christian, he had some kind of born-again experience. He's not like we are here. He's not like even people in the female church that have been really serving God for years. He's pretty much a nominal Christian. So now, the whole world knows, including President Trump, that this is no cult of Trump. There is no cult of Trump. Now, Trump said something when he was running, when he was running for the nomination. I heard him say it. I viewed the video of him saying it, and I, can, I cannot even have an opinion as to whether he meant it or he was joking, because I know that he jokes. And what he said was that he could stand up on Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody, and these people would still follow him. And I don't know whether he really believed that or he was mocking the news media that was saying bad things about his followers. I honestly don't know whether he meant it or not. But even for those that thought that he meant it or if he did mean it, I'm going to choose to believe he didn't mean it. I wouldn't want people following me like that. I don't want you following me like that. I don't want you following me so that you give up your own mind and your own thought process. I don't, I, I'm going to choose to believe he didn't mean that. What do you want a bunch of zombies following you for? That's what the left wants, a bunch of zombies following them. Well now, everyone that's up on what's going on in the conservative, nationalistic Americana movement, it's been established. God is the one that's in control, not Donald J. Trump. <laughs> it's written. It's written on the heavenlies. It's written on the heavenlies. God and the Constitution and the parallel of the Constitution is spiritual righteousness. Righteousness prevailed over a mistake that our beloved president made, which as far as God is con concerned, was a betrayal. And 
we must forgive him for that betrayal and understand his motive. His motive was to get health care for the American people. And he made a mistake. Now, you all listening to me, you need to know President Donald J. Trump made a mistake. And you need to understand that it was not for selfish motives, but it was because he wanted to help the American people, and he was wrong, and he knows that he was wrong. And you all need to forgive him. But you need to know that he did it. You can't forgive him unless you understand that he did it. He betrayed Jesus. But he didn't mean to betray Jesus. He had no idea that he was betraying Jesus. You need to understand that every time you made a choice that Jesus didn't make, you betrayed him. So, we love President Trump. Today, he is completely and absolutely forgiven. And uh, before I came out here this morning, I started listening to a YouTube video, but I didn't have time to finish listening to it. I, he says that they have the votes for health care, but, but they have to pass it by this week for it to work. I'm not sure what the dead, I think it has something to do with the debt ceiling, but I'm not sure about what the deadline is about. And he said they can't, they can't vote in time because one of the people that are part of, part of their block of votes is in the hospital so that they won't be voting on it until January, February, or March. But in the meantime, he's going to be signing an executive order. But then I didn't listen to the rest of it. But that's not today's message. So the next part of this, of this video is this. Is this it's, it was supposed to be an interview, but it turned into a debate. Chris Cuomo. I, I really, I don't listen to broadcast news, or I don't even listen to cable news. I really didn't know him very well. But he is just one of the swamp creatures. And I want to give you a heads up before you listen to this debate. I want to give you a heads up as to what to listen for, because it's really incredible. This is what the left does. Everything that they're doing, they accuse the other people of doing. Okay. Judge Roy Moore is an outspoken advocate of Christian morals and the Bible. But his position that got him ousted as a judge and his position on gay marriage and that, that um, Ten Commandment issue, his position is based on what's called, what he calls organic law. And I believe it's not just him, that's what it's called, organic law. What does that mean? We would say grassroots, foundational law. What does that mean? I meant to come out here with the uh, preamble to the Constitution, and I, di I didn't do it. So I cannot, <coughs> I cannot quote the preamble to the Constitution to you. Or the, I cannot quote the Bill of Rights to you. But it says something like this. That all men are created equal and have the right to the pursuit of liberty uh, and, and life and happiness. Okay? and that these laws are given to us by God. That's what our Bill of Rights, that's what our Bill of Rights, the preamble to the Constitution, say, that these laws, that they're now they're going to be writing the Constitution, that all of this Constitution is based on rights that God gives us, the right to liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And there's a third one, and I'm embarrassed to tell you, I don't know what it is, but my memory isn't the best, I'm sorry. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and that it is God that gives us these rights. See? That's the foundation of our country and our Constitution. And he, uh, he makes an argument. You're going to hear, just do the best that you can to follow me. You're going to have to really pay attention because Chris Cuomo is really attacking him, this terrible man. And, um, and Judge Moore will not back down his argument. Well, let, let, me, let me make it clearer to you. At the time that this debate took to the place, the Alabama legislature passed a law that said gay, legal, gay marriage is illegal. And Judge Moore was in office at the time. Okay. And uh, the, uh, so, a fe but a federal judge said that the Alabama law 
was illegal and that they had to marry gay people. Judge Moore says, said, or is saying, you're going to hear him say, well, please help me to explain this. He's saying that that federal judge, he's saying what that federal judge said is not law. He said the Alabama state legislature passed a law that gay marriage is illegal. He said this federal judge was a woman, apparently. She has an opinion, a legal opinion, that gay marriage is legal, and she overreached, over, overshadowed the, uh, the state law. So we're talking about states' rights against federal rights here. He says what, the, what, what one federal judge says is not law. So the case is going to the United States Supreme Court. When the United States Supreme Court, should the United States Supreme Court, which they did, okay, because this is an old debate, should the United States Supreme Court find that gay marriage is legal, okay, then it will be law. But at this point, it's not law. It's one federal judge's opinion. And then he quotes some, some, state, uh, some state law or regulation that says he doesn't have to obey it. He is obeying the, the, law of the, legis the law of the state of Alabama, and that one federal judge's opinion has no effect on him, and he would not perform gay marriage. And it makes sense. I'm no lawyer, but it makes sense to me. He said, should it become law by, from, by the, the federal Supreme Court? That's another issue. He said, this is this one judge's opinion. So he makes a very interesting case. And Chris Cuomo was just obnoxious. And when he couldn't budge this man, he didn't budge. He's, I think he's 70 years old. He's 69 or 70 years old. I had the highest respect for him, Judge, uh, Judge Roy Moore. The man didn't budge. The man didn't budge. So Chris Cuomo, what happens when your opponent won't budge? You know, you start getting anxious. And you start using witchcraft, right? So Chris Cuomo started using witchcraft on him. He said, whatever his position was, he said, and you know it, Judge. What do you mean? Don't tell me what I know. He's telling, Judge Moore is telling you the exact opposite. Why are you telling him, and you know it, Judge? That's witchcraft. That is witchcraft. You, and you know it. That's witchcraft, you see. And he was trying, Chris Como is trying to force Judge Moore to admit that his opposition is strictly because he is a, a Christian, okay, and I, I don't think that I heard this in the interview, but I read it somewhere. It, was, it just really, what is the right word? Shocked me or offended me? I don't know what the word was. I think it was an article from the Washington Post that was talking about something like this and saying, and Judge Moore uh, attributes his beliefs to a Christian God. Can you hear that? A, he attributes his beliefs to a Christian God. What do you mean, a Christian God? Can you hear that? A Christian God? The mind that wrote that... Conference recording. Stop. The mind that said that is a pagan mind that believes in many gods. A Christian God? That's from taking Jehovah up here to down here. In a, in a subliminal cut, whoever isn't defensed in their mind, whoever doesn't know God the way we do, it just goes into their subconscious mind. A Christian God. Okay. So anyway, Chris Como is attacking Judge Moore, trying to force him to admit that his whole objection is Christian-based and not based in the law. And Judge Moore insisted no, um, he, uh, and he has a legitimate legal argument. So Chris Como went from there to say to him, to challenge him, to say to him, well, if the Supreme Court uh, 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 makes it law, will you obey the law? You know? So I, I'm not really sure whether he was issuing licenses or marrying them. I'm not sure exactly what, what, his, what his function was, but it had something to do with gay marriage. And Chris Como said, well, if the Supreme Court makes it law, Will you obey the law? And Judge Moore's response was this. 
Yeah. Remember the Pharisees asked Jesus a question, and I uh, can't remember what the question was, but he said to them, he, Jesus said to the Pharisees, if you answer my question, I'll answer your question. And he said, tell me, was, uh, was John the Baptist, was he sent from God or not? And the scripture says, and the Pharisees conferred amongst themselves and said, well, the people believe that John was a prophet. So they, they, they were afraid to say that they don't believe that God sent him. You know? So they wouldn't answer the question. The Pharisees wouldn't answer the question. So Jesus said, well, Jesus said, well, if you don't answer my question, I won't answer yours. <laughs> so that's what Judge Moore did. He gave him a question back, you see. He gave him a question back. He said to him, if you were living, I think 100 years ago, I may have the number wrong, when the Dred Scott decision was made, and there's a decision that was made in the Supreme Court called the Dred Scott decision, which said that black people were property, and therefore uh, owning slaves was legal. So Judge Moore said to Chris Cuomo, well, if you were a government official in that day, would you enforce that law? Would you, would you make your, your legal decisions based upon a belief that human slavery, in particular black people, had a right, that, that the owner had a right to enslave them and that they belonged to the owner? So he wouldn't, Chris Coma wouldn't answer the question. So neither would Judge Moore answer the question. <laughs> so, but I want you to, to, to listen to this incredible debate. I want you to look at the character of the two men, um, challenge you to recognize the witchcraft on Chris Como, and to understand that he is accusing Judge Moore of exactly what he's doing. Judge Moore is saying, this federal judge, it's not law, it's just at this point in the process, it's just her opinion. Therefore, I don't have to obey it. And Chris Como is saying to Judge Moore, you don't have any legal ground to be resisting this. It's just your opinion. But in my opinion, I think Judge Moore has a, in my lay opinion, has a very interesting legal argument for refusing to obey that law at this point, and that it was the judge's opinion. So they're both accusing each other of doing, of, of having a motive of being a personal opinion. <clears throat> <clears throat> So I don't think I made it clear that Chris Como was saying, God does not, he clearly said, he said the words, God does not give us our, our rights. Rights come from man. He completely denied that our rights come from God. And Judge Moore said, it's right there in the Bill of Rights. Yeah. Our, our, our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, those rights come from God. So Chris, Chris Como was saying, no, man either gives it to you or takes it away. And times have changed. And, uh, and also Judge Moore was saying, for centuries the definition of marriage has, oh yeah, this is an important point, for centuries the definition of marriage is one man and one woman. It's never been otherwise in the history of man, uh, in, in history. And marriage, the issue of marriage, is not raised in the Constitution. Now the Constitution says that if there's a particular issue that's not specifically dealt with in the Constitution, then it becomes a state's rights issue. So since marriage is not named in the Constitution, then it should be up to each state to define, to, to pass its own law regarding gay marriage. And the federal government has been overreaching states' rights for years. So the federal government is now saying, and it's now blue of the land, that a, a state, a state cannot pass a law on gay marriage, against gay marriage, because the federal law says that it's okay, so the states now have to honor it. So Judge Moore is saying it's a state's rights issue, and he's right, it's a state's rights issue. If we get another judge or two, conservative judge or two on the Supreme Court, it will be overthrown. Then if the state wants to pass it, that's, that's their business. And then people can move to another state if they want to. But the problem is that our, our conservative officials are buckling all over the place. 
and apparently it was an issue in Alabama, and the governor buckled, and uh, Luther Strange buckled, uh, buckled to the federal antichrist system. You're looking for a single man that's antichrist? It's the system, brethren. It's the it's the European Union, and their lack their 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 lackeys in our own government. Maybe there'll be a single man, maybe, maybe not. We don't need a single man. It's the government. It's the whole government. And they're out to destroy Christianity. And not even because they love homosexuality that much. <laughs> but they want to bring in their pagan gods. They want to bring their pagan gods into the forefront. They want to do it out in the open with their human sacrifice and all of their pagan rituals. That's what this is all about. They want to take down the Constitution completely and restore paganism. Now, I, I, we don't know how far it's going to go. <clears throat> I, I, am, I hope that I've conveyed to you what I'm seeing because I'm seeing the most incredible battle that the Lord Jesus Christ has won on both a political level and on a spiritual level. So, well, several of us in the, in the ministry, we're going to Oklahoma next month to a, a prophecy conference and there are going to be several speakers talking about the return of the Nephilim and the return of pagan of the, of the pagan gods. Well, um, I, I, I don't know that that's going to happen. The war is, is raging. You see, if, if the if the there is a church, you see, there is a female church that's fighting, and and Christ Jesus, the spiritual male, I believe, is here to some degree. As the Lord Jesus can can join with Christ, there is a male influence here. Although the full impact of the spiritual male, Christ Jesus, is not permanently in the earth, the influence of the male is here, and it's strengthening the female church that's fighting. So, if there was no such resistance, then I would say all of these... Uh, Prophets, prophets of the first Adam, which are really the false prophets, because they're getting this prophecy from their carnal mind. That would it would be it would make sense that we would that the pagan gods would appear again and all of this would happen. But the men that are prophesying this, to be honest with you, brother, I don't see any women in any prominent prophetic position writing books and claiming um, to have the the word of the end time. I don't know any woman that's doing it except me. Maybe there's one out there. I don't, I don't know of any other one. Um, what was I trying to say? Uh, yeah, um, the reason they're writing these things is that they don't have this vision. They don't see the power of God behind the scenes. You know, there's, there's two ways. Oh, I haven't lost you, my friend. Okay, have I lost you? My, there are two, two venues in, in which the, the, the Lord expresses himself. Either he comes like he did in Egypt and he does great miracles and sends plagues. Everybody knows that it's him. He sends a, a messenger to Pharaoh and, he, and, and Moses says, Thus saith the Lord, you know, let my people go or I'm going to destroy you. That's one way. And another way that God manifests is the way we see it in the book of Esther. But you really don't hear anything about the name of the Lord. You just see... Mordecai and Esther, characters of righteousness, overthrowing the whole plot and plan to destroy to destroy Israel without God's name ever being named. Well, that's what's happening today. That kind of power that was operating in the book of Esther. <coughs> if you have eyes to see, it's operating today. And I have hope, and I hope that you have hope with me, that in the near future, the full impact of the manhood of the second Adam, Christ Jesus, will be permanently embedded in the earth and overthrow this wickedness in the spiritual plane with a single knockout or two knockouts. You know? So if that's the case, if we're winning and there is not even a full manifestation of Christ Jesus yet and we're moving, we're inching, we're making, we're taking ground so this is a tremendous defeat for Mitch McConnell, electing uh, Judge Roy uh, Moore. Uh, well, why should I think 
that the giants and the and the pagan gods and the Nephilim are going to appear again. I would only think that if I don't recognize what God is doing. So the church by and large doesn't recognize what I'm talking about today. But awaiting their solution is the rapture. They're, they're focusing on the rapture. They're looking at the sky, waiting for the rapture while there's a big spiritual war going on down here. So I, I haven't heard from God. God does not talk to me about things like, like, like that. Uh, the, the, the kind of prophecies that these other men are preaching. I have my message, okay? And he doesn't tell me, well, that's not true. And the reason and he would never do that, the reason he would never do that is that it has, isn't determined yet. This world is clay. This world is not, this world is formed. The only thing that's solid in this world is what happened yesterday. The only thing that's solid is what happened 60 seconds ago. Everything's continuously changing. That's why Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour, only my Father in heaven, because it's not set. It's not set in stone. What's going to happen is not set in stone. But if I look at the momentum, I see spiritual movement from the kingdom of God. And I see them picking up momentum. So why would I believe that things would deteriorate to the, to the degree that the pagan gods would actually appear? Now, maybe they will, you know, but I'm telling you, that's the reason Jesus won't answer me, because it's not determined yet. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, so, we're going to play, play this debate, which should have been an interview, but it was a debate. We're going to witness Chris Como, you know, in my opinion, in the spirit of wickedness, try to force uh, Judge Moore to admit that he had personal motives for for resisting the law of the land, and Judge Moore saying it's not the law of the land, okay, and Judge Moore refusing to answer the question as to whether or not he would obey the law if it were the law of the land, unless Chris Como answered the question, would you obey the law when it said that that black men could be the property of white men? Would you would you obey the law? Would you do that? Would you would you rule against some black slave? petitioning the court for his freedom, and would you bring down a decision saying, you are still a slave because you are that man's property? So neither one answered the question. <laughs> okay, are there any questions, or would anyone like to comment before I start the video for you? I thought we'd have a, a double session today, but we may not get there. It's one o'clock, we'll see. I don't think that the I don't think the debate's more than half an hour, but it could be an hour. We'll find out. He has no questions or comments yet. Okay, so we're going to stop this file. Did you want to say yes, something? Yes, yes, just a minute. I don't know if this is. I'm sorry. Well, tell me what it is, and I'll well, decide. Well, what it whether it's right or wrong, I'm telling you. I had a dream a week ago, and I dreamt that, well, the main part of it was, there was all, it was something to do with all the, all the, all the, all the ministry, you know, there was a lot of ministry. This talk. ministry? And yeah, you were in it, you know, but I can't put it all together because there was so much, but <clears throat> when it came out, it was, I was going up and I was attached to someone. I was attached, I was going up. I said, oh my God. You know, and I had mentioned it to you, but I don't know if you were tired. You did, I think you did mention it to me. Today, I said, I'm going to wear white today. I don't know who I white. And I get here and I see you wearing white. Yeah. And then he gave me, said, this morning, he gave me, Sheila, I was attached to Sheila. And she was going up, and she had the attachment of Christ. And mm -hmm. Christ was attached to her, yes. and I was attached to, to you going up. It wasn't Christ, it was Christ in you. It's Christ in me that's yes, going up. And that's going up, and I was uh, attached to her. I said, oh my God, I was crying today. Wow. 
well. I, I'm, I'm so hoping for you. Know? This morning, just when you're saying all this stuff, so hoping I know mean, you, know, you saw it. I yes. said, Lord, I don't know whether I should say this or not, you know? That's funny because even last night I said, I think I'll wear white tomorrow, and I don't wear white very often. So. Ah. It was, it was Sheila, it, it was the saints. It's the mm. saints. So you see, there really is a rapture, but these people, they don't understand what it is. Yes. I wonder if that means, you know, you know, because September 23rd came and went, and I spoke to the Lord yesterday, and I said, well, I knew that whatever happened would be imperceivable, and I wonder what happened, so maybe we're ascending. It was the 25th of, of, of September. It was a Monday. Or Sunday? No, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, Monday. Yeah, it was Monday. I can't remember what day it was, but I thought mm -hmm. it was Monday. No, had to be the day that you spoke. Maybe it was Sunday. I think it, yeah. The whole church. There is a church, see. It's mostly female right now, but there are people in their in their female side that are very faithful to the Lord, and the church is rising. The church is rising in power. That's what it means. The church is rising in power. Very exciting. But I don't know why we're wearing white, but that's it, that's it, that's interesting. Well, so I would really like to understand that one if you would explain it to me.